We thank you that throughout the day, you kept us as the apple of your eyes. You watched over us. You went out with us. You've brought us back. Father, we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this time that we are once again in your presence. We are here, Father, to look at your word. I ask for hearing ears. I ask for seeing eyes. And I ask, Lord, that you will help us to be doers of your word, even at the end, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, we've worshipped. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans 12, verse 3. There are times when it's important to remind ourselves of some basic principles in the Word of God. There are things in the Word that they are a compulsory part of our lives as children of God. And from time to time, we need to look at those things just to refresh our minds, refresh our hearts, and to help us check whether we are doing what God expects of us in these areas or not. And the topic we are looking at this month is one of those such things. We are going to be looking at faith. Faith principles. We are looking at faith principles in the month of um, this month. And um, it's for some of us who might say it's basic. Well, for some of us, we are like, Pastor, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I trust that as we look at the word together, that word will cause the faith in our hearts to rise in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. One thing about faith is that it's available to every child of God. It's not just some specific people that God has given faith, but he gave his faith to every single one. In Romans 12, 3, the Bible says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as co according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Hallelujah. It says God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. Not 2. Romans 12, 3. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Which means that we all have the same measure of faith. It's not that some people have uh, more faith than others the moment you are born again. But once you give your life to Christ, once you become a child of God, the same quantity of faith is measured out to each and every one of us. The difference between where you are today as a child of God and where someone else is, is how much or how well you have used your faith. That's the only difference. Because the Bible says that God has dealt to every single one of us the measure of faith. Not a measure, but the measure of faith. The measure of faith. So we all have faith as children of God. It's, all, it's available to every single one of us. Now, faith is acting as if God can be trusted. That's how I like to define my own faith. Faith is acting as if God can be trusted. To me, that's what it is. If my God can be trusted, then I can act on his word. If he's trustworthy, I will do what he says in his word without thinking twice about it. If God is who he says he is, if he can do what he says he can do, then I'm going to behave as if what I read in the word is true. I will not bother myself as to whether the hands will be there to catch me if I jump or not. Hallelujah. That's one thing about faith. Is God who he says he is or is he pretending to be who he says he is? Faith is an activator. Faith is an activator. When you hear the word, for me, when I hear the word activator, the first thing that comes to my mind is curl activators. You, uh, what do you call it? You texturize your hair, 
you need curl activators to bring out the curls. For women, you know what that means. You bring out the curl, the curl activator brings out the curl, which means that the curls are there normally in the hair, but you need something to help emphasize, to, um, to bring out the curls that you're looking for. So when I say faith is an activator, it means there are things that belong to us as children of God. We have a covenant arrange, agreement with God. So there are things that are part of our covenant agreement with, that, with our Heavenly Father. Faith helps us to enjoy the things that are in the covenant. Without faith, you cannot enjoy the things that belong to us. Without faith, you cannot participate in what God says you can participate in. Without faith, you cannot enjoy the finances, the healing that belongs to you, the protection that belongs to you. Without faith, you cannot enjoy any of those things because faith is an activator. Faith brings into the natural realm the things that God says he has given you and I. Hallelujah. So the thing about God or the thing about our covenant is everything the covenant says that we are, that's what we are. The covenant says we are children of God. The covenant says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. The covenant says we have authority over all the works of the enemy. But we cannot see that manifest in our lives if we don't use faith. We will not enjoy the protection of God, for instance, if we don't trust in the fact that God is our protection. If we don't trust in the fact that God is the one that watches over us. If we don't trust in the fact that he that keepeth Israel does not slumber nor sleep, there is no way we'll enjoy the protection of God. Hallelujah. So that's the main thing about faith as an activator. Faith activates the promises of God in our lives. Faith activates the promises of God in our lives. Like we have said many times before, faith is seen in our action and in our words. So when we are talking with our friends, we are gisting with our friends, for someone who is faith-minded, that person will be listening to hear what we are saying. And what we say helps people to locate us. Uh, this person knows, is, is walking in faith. This person really knows God. This person really knows how to trust God. Or, uh, this person is still getting road when they go, depending on what we say. So we need to learn to allow the words we speak rhyme with what God says about us. If um, the word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus we are healed, then it means that every single time the enemy knocks our, at our door with a health challenge, we shall answer with the word of God. We shall answer with the word of God that says, you came to the wrong address because Jesus has already paid the price for me to be well. Therefore, I refuse to accept whatever it is you are bringing. Take it somewhere else. Hallelujah. And that basically is our faith showing up. That is our faith showing up. But when the devil knocks at our door and we open and we say, hey, Bill, I say uh, malaria has come. The malaria will jump on you. <laughs> and if you are the type that doesn't like injections, God help you if they decide to give you injection on top of that one. <laughs> so we need to learn to speak out our faith and act out our faith. Because everything that the covenant says we have, we have them. Every single thing. Whatever you see another child of God enjoying that is part of your covenant right as a child of God, you have the right to those things also. God is not partial. God does not sit down and start trying to do tinini uh, tanana, who am I going to bless today? God doesn't do that. The blessings of God, they are yes and amen. And they are to every single one of us as his children. They are to every single one of us as his children. 
The only thing that makes uh, Brother A different from you might be the fact that Brother A spends more time reading the word, meditating on the word, and doing the word. Because the doer of the word, the Bible says, is the one that is blessed in his deeds. You'll be blessed in your deeds as you do God's word in the name of Jesus. Everything the covenant says you can do, you can do. That's the thing. Everything that the covenant says you can do, you can do as a child of God. You can do. If the covenant, if you find somewhere in the covenant that says anything you put your hand to is blessed, and you believe that word and you stand on that word, everything that you put your hand to will surely be blessed in the name of Jesus. You might find people that are struggling, but because you believe that anything you put your hand to is blessed, you will not struggle. But you will only rise from level to level. You keep going higher because God's word will work in your lives. Hallelujah. What I have realized is that when we act on God's word, that word will multiply in our lives. That word will come to pass. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 4. For those of us that still use a Bible, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 4. Faith has no backup. Faith has no backup plan. Faith has no backup plan. If you are talking and you have a backup plan for your faith, then you are not working in faith. Faith has no backup plan. You either believe God has heard and provided or you don't. What do I mean by that? Uh, there are times when our daddy in the house will speaking under the unction, say, okay, go and pick your parking space. Go and pick your parking space. Go and pick where you want to park your car. You know, he's done that quite a number of times. If you are trusting God for a car and you're walking in faith, you will not go and park, pick your parking space and say, hey, just by the second window, that's where my car will be parking. Pastor Joel, shift your own car. My car will park. You know, that kind of thing. You don't say that and then after five months, you say, well, uh, since it is taking time, maybe the money that has come or what I'm trusting God for, maybe I should use it to buy a, mo a machine. Maybe I should use it to buy a motorcycle. Faith doesn't do that. Faith stands. The Bible says, have you done all to stand? You stand. You stand till you see the answer. You stand till you see the answer. You don't stand halfway, and then after a while, you start scratching your head, and you say, eh, well, you see, eh, we have waited long enough. We don't tire. What is plan B for us? So faith does not have a backup plan. If you have backup plan, go and check your faith. <laughs> if you have backup plan, you are not acting in faith. Let me give you a very, very simple illustration. Very simple, very practical. For instance, you are, you've dis made up your mind. It's an illustration. I'm not pointing to anybody or saying anything to anybody. It's just an illustration. You've made up your mind that I'm not going to use glasses, right? You say, okay, as I get older, Father, I thank you because Moses was 120 years old when he died. His strength was not abated, neither were his eyes dim, Right? So you say that, you believe God, you trust God for that. If you are truly walking in faith, you don't get to a point where you do like this, you do like this, and you say, please, uh, <laughs> that doctor died, that hospital that you said they, they are doing medical, <laughs> how long are they around for? How long are they around for? What you are doing is you are looking for plan B. Plan A, the walk of faith says, sink or swim, do or die. God, I'm standing on your word. I'm standing on your word. And if it means, I was listening to a message the other day, and if it means that the, the water will sink with you inside, the boat will sink with you inside, you are ready to stand there because you believe that God's word where you are concerned is yes and amen. That's what you believe. 
that's what you believe. I was listening to a, a message by Lester Sumrall the other day, and he shared a testimony, he's late now, of when he was a young evangelist, and he was trusting God for finances. They traveled from one place to another. He traveled in Asia a lot. And he was traveling from one place to another. They had a journey they were to make. The other people in the team had their transport money, but he did not have transport money. He said the day they were to leave on that journey, he woke up, he knelt down and he prayed and he said, Daddy God, number one, I'm not going to eat today. Number two, I have packed my bag, but I'm not leaving this room until you provide the money. If the others like, they can go and leave me. But I believe that your word is true. I believe that you said I should go on this assignment. And I believe that you said you have made provision for me. So until the provision comes, I'm not leaving my room. He said he could have asked any of the other people. Abish, you are, you are in a group now. You are in a group. You could, he could have asked any of the other group and said, please, can you give me something? When, when the Lord answers me, I will... I will return it back to you. But he made up his mind that God's word was true. God said he should go on that assignment, and God said he'll supply that need. He'll meet that need. Jehovah Jireh is either Jehovah Jireh or he's not. He's either God that provides or he's not. So when it was breakfast time, the madam of the house was calling everybody and called and said, it's time for breakfast. He said, I'm not eating today. Any problem? No problem. He did not tell her what he was trusting God for. It was between him and God. So he was just inside. He said, in fact, at a point, he just lay on the floor and was, he felt so discouraged, but in the midst of his discouragement, he just knew that God would show up for him. And while he was on the floor, on the floor just thinking about God and thinking about the fact that the others will soon be leaving and he, he was still trying to. He had the owner of the house knock at the door. You know, in his mind, he was like, I've said I'm not eating. Why are you disturbing me? So he went to answer and said, there's somebody at the door. They are looking for you. His mind was, I'm supposed to be traveling. I'm not ready to counsel anybody now. They now said, the people said they are not leaving until they see you. So he goes to the door, and at the door he met a man that he didn't know. The man said, Brother Somra, I did not sleep in the night because God will not let me sleep because of you. May people lose their sleep because of you. <laughs> God did not let me sleep. In fact, Brother Somra said he did not tell the person, but in his own mind he was like, me, I did not sleep because I was sleeping. <laughs> I was praying and trusting God for that, for that money to come. And that's how the person just handed an envelope to him. He said, the, the person just told him that God told me that you don't have the money to go. But me, I thought you had the money. That's why I was refusing to answer God. You understand? When people think that you are more than you are. That was what happened in that situation. But God met that need because the man of God stayed in faith, believing God that God was faithful. God will answer your prayers as you stand on his word in the name of Jesus. Make up your mind that you're not giving yourself an alternative. Whatever you are trusting God for, whatever you see in the word that the Bible says belong to you, hold on to that thing and refuse to give up. As you stand on the word of God, God will cause those doors to open where you are concerned in the name of Jesus. Romans 4.18, talking about Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Romans 4.18, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he considered not his own body. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. That's what faith is all about. 
Faith is when you are fully persuaded that what God says concerning you, you'll do. No matter how long it takes, you'll do it. No matter what the circumstances look like, what God has said about you, you'll bring to pass. That's what faith is all about. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because he that comes to, e to God must believe that God is. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's why it's important that we know what faith is all about and we learn to act in faith. For a lot of us, the very easy thing to, the, one of the very easy ways to learn about faith is our finances. If we believe that God meets our needs, we will not have problems being givers. If we believe that God meets our needs, we will not have problems sowing. If we believe that God is one that provides for us, we will not have problems reaching out our hands to other people. That's the thing about it. So if you are stingy, check your faith walk. If you are stingy, then the main thing is that you have, you have not trusted God to be your provider. Jehovah Jireh will not leave you to go hungry, neither will he leave you without your needs being met in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. So faith is an act. If you have faith, you act as if it's true. And once you're in Christ, you have the faith that you need. Once you're in Christ, you have... You see, faith is just like your muscles. You, we all have muscles. We all have muscles. A two-year-old child has muscles. A newborn baby has muscles. But it takes exercising those muscles to determine what you can do with the muscles. A one-year-old child might try to carry this and will not be able to because his muscles are still very soft and flabby. At the same time, you might find a 10-year-old child that will want to carry this and is not able to because he has not exercised his muscles to that point. Our faith, our ability to believe God for things depends of, on how much we have trusted him and how much we have seen him show up in our behalf. God does not fail his people. Anything he says he'll do for us, he'll always do where we are concerned in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3, verses 16. Faith needs corresponding action. Daniel 3, 16, and then Luke chapter 5, verse 4. Let me start with Luke 5, verse 4. Faith without corresponding actions is dead. There has to be action to our faith. We cannot say we have faith and we are not doing anything about it. We cannot say we have faith and we're not saying anything about that faith. If we believe we have faith, we should be thanking God for answering our prayers. We should be thanking God for the manifestation, even though we have not seen the manifestation. Luke chapter 5. Peter trusted the words of Jesus, even though it was difficult for him to do. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. At thy word. You see, the only thing that Peter acted on was the word of God. He acted on the spoken, word of God, um, the spoken word of God because that was what he had at that time. But we have the written word of God from the beginning to the end with us. If Peter can act on the spoken word of God, we can also act on the written word of God. Because the word of God, it's alive, the Bible says. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's alive. It's not dead. Why is the word of God not dead? Because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word is God himself. Jesus is the word of God. So if the word of God says it will do something in our lives, it will definitely do what it says it will do for us in the name of Jesus. So Peter said, I have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word. I will let down the net. 
And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Because he obeyed. Do you know if he had refused to obey, if he had not dropped the net, there would be no fish. Even though Jesus said, let down your nets for a drought. The moment Jesus spoke, the fish were there. They were ready to come. But he needed action. He needed a faith action for the fish to show up. So if God has spoken a word to you, well, we, we had a powerful message on Sunday about acceleration and compensation. If God has given you that word specifically in your heart about this being a season of acceleration and compensation for you, you have to act on that word for it to come to pass. If not, you'll see cars passing by you and you'll know everybody that is a car and you'll start wondering, God, why is my own car not moving? Everybody's car is moving. My own is not moving. That will not be your story in this season in Jesus' name. As people's cars are moving and passing, your own will follow and it will pass them in the name of Jesus. So when you hold on to the word of God, when you hold on to a specific word of God, you have to do that word for the word to be made manifest. Peter said, at thy word, I will let down the nets. And because he obeyed, because he acted, all the fish that had the voice they found their way to that net. In fact, if you read the next, uh, the end of the verse where I read, it says so much so that their net break. Where were the fish in the night when they were looking for the fish? Where were they? They were there. But for some funny reason, anytime the net dropped, they would run away. Anytime the net dropped, they would run away. But this time when the Lord spoke, they couldn't run away. Your blessings will not run away from you in Jesus' name. As you act in faith and you walk out your faith work, every blessing that belongs to you will locate your house, they will locate your businesses in the name of Jesus. So Peter trusted faith is an act. Faith is an act. It's possible for you to doubt in your head, but as long as there is faith in your heart, you're good. You're okay because it will come to pass. The children, um, the three Hebrew children were also in a similar situation. I'll only read the early parts of it, but we, we all know the story. Verse 16, the Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Remember I said faith is, a, faith is an act. It's seen in our actions and it's seen in our words. It's seen in our action and it's seen in our words. Peter acted out on what Jesus told him to do and we saw his faith show up. The three Hebrew children, their own faith is coming out in their words. Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't worship me, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And they answered and said, king, sorry, no vex." But we're not worshipping you. We're not worshipping you. If it is that the God we serve is going to deliver us, he will vindicate us in this matter. But even if he does not deliver us, we still have made up our mind we're not worshipping you. That was their word. That's what he said. Verse 18 says, If not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And as you read further, you realize that because of their faith in God, when they were thrown in that fiery furnace, God himself joined them in that place. God himself joined them. So even in the difficult places that the enemy will throw at you, as long as you have made up your mind that you are going to be there with God, God will definitely show up in that situation with you. Amen? He'll definitely show up in that situation with you. He's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to forsake you. Every word he has spoken concerning you, he's going to bring to pass. He's going to bring to pass, no matter how hard it looks. Even when it looks as if your back is against the wall, keep standing because he said, having done all to stand, stand. Keep standing. And as you keep standing on God's word, the words will become truth. They'll become life. They'll become what you have trusted in to be in your lives in the name of Jesus. God's words can never fail where you are concerned. 
as long as we are acting in faith, as long as we are trusting in his word, because faith is simply trusting God, trusting that he is who he says he is, trusting that he can do what, he's, he, can do what he says he can do. God does not fail any of his children. He has not done that and he will not start where you are concerned in the name of Jesus. So let's meditate on God's word. Let's study God's word. Let's read the word and let's make up our minds that that word will be a part of our lives. And as we do that, the faith of God that causes us to enjoy the blessings, the covenant blessings that belong to us will grow stronger and stronger in our lives in the name of Jesus. Your faith will cause you to walk in the blessings that belong to you. And they'll cause you to be who God says you are, even in this season, in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet as we thank God for his faithfulness. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your word. We thank you because you said without faith we cannot please you. And you have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Father, we thank you for the faith that is on our inside. We choose to walk in faith. We choose to believe your word. We choose to obey your word. And as we do that on a daily basis, our faith grows stronger and stronger. And we receive all that we are trusting you for, all that belongs to us as your children in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we've prayed.